finishing off our look at hardware, we're going to take a look at output. In fact, you're experiencing output right now. Like I said in the previous video, if you're seeing me, you're seeing visual output. And if you're hearing me, you're hearing audio output. So output is getting information out of the computer. This is pretty much why we have computers. We're trying to get something out of the computer. They'd be pretty worthless if you put stuff in a computer and nothing ever came out. And so output is getting information out of the computer that we can use. The three big ones would be a monitor. This is your most common output device. This is what you're seeing right now. It produces soft copy. You have printers. Printers produce hard copy, again, from the last video, something you can touch. And we also have speakers. So if you're listening to the soothing sounds of my voice, you're using speakers. Okay, moving on to monitors. If you're looking at me, hello, then you're seeing me through something called a monitor. Monitors are your primary output devices. As I just said, they produce something called soft copy. And we have two technologies that are commonly used for monitors. Well, let me strike that and amend that. You really have one primary technology nowadays, but I'm including the other one because you still run into them. The older technology is the CRT, the cathode ray tube. This is the old fashioned monitors that had the big badonkadonk, okay? They were very wide or they had a lot of depth to them. And so you really had a plan on where you put them on your desk. Those were the old CRTs. The newer ones are your LCDs, your liquid crystal display monitors. That's pretty much, if you go to any big box store, computer store, is what you're going to find on the shelves. And those are LCD. To get the video, to for the monitor to be able to show you the video, we have to have something called a display or video adapter. This is the part of the computer that's going to turn the digits into video output. This is your video card. This component can either be integrated, which means it's built into the motherboard, previous videos, or it can be an expansion card, which is something you would buy and then open up your computer case and install into the computer. Basically, the differences between an integrated and an expansion card comes down to money and what you're going to use it for. If you just need a computer for just day-to-day -day regular activities, then an integrated video card is just fine. An expansion card video card is more for your gamers and your video and your media developers. The gamers really need sharp, crisp, high quality graphics. When you're shooting somebody and you're making a headshot, boom, headshot. You want to see the gore, okay? And so you can't see the gore without a really good video card. So the better the video card, the more gore, the more detail you're going to see. Now, Minecraft is a whole other story, um, but for the high end, high quality video games, the higher, the more powerful the video card, the better off you are. And yes, the video cards can get very, very, very expensive very quickly. So budget is very important there. But video cards, uh, display adapters, these are the things turning your information from the computer into visual output that will be displayed on the monitor. Next, we have the printer. The printer is an output device that's going to deliver hard copy. In the previous video, in input, we also talked about scanners. And I said that a lot of printers are becoming all-in-ones. And so a lot of printers now have scanners built in. I myself just purchased a printer recently uh, from Best Buy. And it has everything built in. It has a scanner and a printer. And by the way, totally FYI, tie down. Um, if you shop at, and I'm not advertising for Best Buy, but if you shop at Best Buy, be aware that they will meet prices. Now, they used to have a policy they would meet any local competitor's policy, any just regular like brick and mortar store, but they'll also match Amazon prices. So if you're shopping at Best Buy, get yourself an app for your phone. You can scan items. Amazon will give you a price check on them that you can get at Amazon. And if it's cheaper at Amazon, show Best Buy folks the price and they'll match the price. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is because the printer I bought, which is a, um, it's an Epson, it was $150 already marked down. I found the same printer on Amazon for $99. I saved quite a bit of money. So a little bit of ramble there. Not an intro, not on BCIS, but definitely need to know as a consumer. Okay. 
Moving on, there are several types of printers on the market. The most common would be the inkjet printer, followed by the laser printer, also very common. You're going to run into laser printers most likely in a business setting. We have the old-fashioned daisy wheel printer, the dot matrix printer. These are the ones that went and then the little uh, things on the side with the little holes that you'd peel off. You have dye sublimation printers. These are very expensive. And you have thermal printers. Thermal printers, if you go to any, and I don't see any receipts next to me, but if you go to any store and get a receipt, most likely your receipt is printed via thermal paper. Now, all of these printers, when you're, I'm teaching the a certification course, the computer repair course, we go into all of these printers in more detail. This is just kind of an overview. Audio device, if you're listening again to my voice right now, you're listening via an audio device or sound card. It's going to turn sound, audio information from the computer into sound that you can hear. Again, video, audio cards can be integrated or expansion cards like video cards. Now, most audio uh, cards, most audio um, devices are built into the computer. We're really not as picky as far as audio quality goes. A lot of that has to do with the speakers you have. But if you are a major gamer, or let's say that you're into audio, let's say you're doing um, music editing and sound editing for video and things like that, you can get a expansion card, sound card, which you open up the computer and install, and you can hear sound that way, and you can get a better quality sound. You'd have to get some expensive speakers, things like that. So an audio device or sound card is how you're getting sound out of the computer. The modem. Modem is actually uh, an acronym for modulate, demodulate. The modem, remember the computer only works on digital signals. In the old days of telephone, telephone were analog. And so you'd have to take the analog information from the phone and turn it into digital information for the computer to understand. And so that's what the modem would do. The modem is both an input device and an output device. It's an input device in that you get information from the telephone line into your computer. And it's an output device by getting the information from the computer out to your ISP or your bulletin board or wherever you're dialing into. The modem allows the computer to connect to an ISP, an internet service provider. We'll talk about those in other lessons. It can connect to other people directly as far as computers go. You can send faxes through it, all that good stuff. I would say most people don't have modems on their computers anymore, but we do have this. We do have network interface cards, otherwise known as NICs. These can be both integrated or added as an expansion card, and it allows your computer to connect to a network. As we see wireless becoming more and more popular, we might see network interface cards being phased out in favor of the wireless NICs. We'll see what happens there, kind of like how modems were phased out on the back of computers. Then there are components of the computers that just don't fall into any of our categories from the previous videos. Here are two of them. We have the case. The case is a shell. It is what holds the components of a computer. And your case can be anything from a simple case to incredibly elaborate cases. If you do a Google search on PC mods or cool cases, you can find a lot of interesting computer cases that people spend a lot of time and resources on making really super cool. But that's just it. Okay, another one of these items that people don't know, nor do they want to know, when you're talking about a computer, when you talk about the computer part that's on the floor, the big part that's in the case, a lot of people will call it the computer, or they'll call it the hard drive, or they'll call it the CPU. The actual technical name for the case and everything inside the case is a system unit. The CPU, as we've talked about in previous videos, is the CPU. The hard drive is the hard drive. But everything together inside the case is known as a system unit. Again, if you talk to people and say, oh, that's the system unit, they're going to wonder what you're talking about. But now you know what's really going on. And the last, the last piece of hardware I want to talk about is something called a power supply. The power supply is what gives power to all the components on the computer. Now, what's interesting is that the wall that you plug things into run by AC. The computer and technology in general 
work via DC power. So your computer, your laptop, your technology devices, for the most part, use DC power. Your power supply is there to help convert the power from AC to DC power. So this is what a power supply does. On a laptop, the brick thing, you know, if you plug your laptop into the wall, you have the cable that goes to a brick thing and then the cable to your computer. That brick thing is your power supply. That is your converter that switches it from AC to DC power. Interestingly enough, and this is totally an FYI again, if you have a laptop and your battery starts to die, you might not be able to boot up your computer. But if you take the battery out of the laptop and plug it into the wall, all of a sudden your laptop works. The reason for this is because a laptop will pull power from the battery while the battery is pulling power from the wall. If the battery is bad, then the laptop can't pull power from it. But if you remove the battery, then the laptop's pulling power directly from the brick, thus the wall, and you can bypass a bad battery. So that's it for hardware. As we are going to do in all our presentations, I'm going to give you at least three to five links on places you can go for more information. My first choice is Ars Technica. Ars Technica is a geeky website full of technology news. They usually break stories before your big news stations do. So for example, if you're uh, Fox News, CNN News, any of those major news outlets, Ars Technica usually has that information before it makes it to the quote unquote mainstream media. The next site I recommend checking out is CNET. CNET is definitely a geek haven. You have news and information from CNET. They also have an entire area where you can download software. So be sure to check out CNET. If you want to buy computer components for less, check out Newegg. Newegg is where I get a lot of my computer components from, as well as other technology geek people out there. Newegg does not have a physical presence like Best Buy or Staples or Office Depot. You order online from them. They get into you pretty quickly. One of the great things about Newegg is that components and computers are reviewed by other geeks. So if you are a fan of The Simpsons and you know who the comic book guy is, these are the people leaving comments on technology. And so if they think it's thumbs up, you can guarantee it's a good component, even if you've never heard of it before. The other site I recommend for buying computers and components from is someplace called Tiger Direct. They also have some great stuff. And finally, if you want the final word on hardware, be sure to check out Tom's Hardware. They have some amazing articles, reviews, and he published a book a while back, which was all about hardware, everything you want to know about computer hardware. So be sure to check out those links. All these places are places you want to bookmark. Okay, in our next video series, we drop the hardware and we start to take a look at software. Until then, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.